Good evening, everyone. I am Kay Zehra and the host of this webinar. Welcome to the webinar from Margins to Cento, Celebrating and Protecting Minority Women's Rights, organized by South Asia Research Institute for Minorities. Today, we come together to recognize the unique experiences and challenges faced by minority women and explore actions to promote and protect their rights. Women from marginalized communities often face intersexual discrimination, systemic barrier, and social inequalities that prevent them from realizing their full potential and access basic, basic rights and resources. This webinar seeks to raise awareness about these issues and create a platform to share experiences, perspectives, and recommendations for addressing them. Through engaging discussions, inspiring stories, and expert insights, we hope to empower and support the minority women and amplify their voice. We are honored to have a dignified panel of speakers who bring a wealth of knowledge, expertise, and experiences to this conversation. Thank you all for joining us in this important dialogue where we can learn from one and other and commit to taking action towards creating a more inclusive and equitable society for all women. So without further delay, let's get started with our very first speaker, Ms. Cynthia Steff, who is a potential contributor to SARIM. She is a Dalit activist, writer, social policy researcher, and independent journalist from India. We appreciate you being here today. You are welcome to take the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, before I start, can I clarify uh, how much time I have? Uh, you have like six, seven to eight minutes. Okay, sure. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I want to uh, uh, thank Sarim very much for uh, inviting me to speak at this uh, important juncture. As we know, the month of March is devoted to uh, uh, speaking and uh, writing and uh, mobilizing around women's issues because uh, March 8th is International Women's Day and in India and uh, I think in other parts of the world as well. There is a lot of focus on uh, women's issues and concerns. And uh, increasingly, uh, there is recognition that uh, women's issues uh, are not only the, women, the issues of the uh, prominent uh, publicly visible uh, sections, but in fact, largely based on the needs and uh, concerns of the masses uh, of which uh, women form a very large part especially an invisibilized and silenced part. And uh, when you talk about uh, already the women who are faced with gender discrimination and also class discrimination and caste discrimination, religious discrimination, you will find that the numbers of women in public life of uh, the women who are disadvantaged in all these areas will be very less. And so their voices are less um, uh, heard and seen in the public discourse and their issues are rarely brought to the fore. So this, uh, uh, at this time, I would like to spend a few minutes uh, talking about the situation of South Asian women in general uh, and minority women in these sections in particular. Uh, I think one of the important things about South Asia is that religion plays an important role in the society. And so we are, uh, we are countries which have very distinct religious identities. Uh, if you look at uh, the, uh, the Sark countries, Nepal is known as a Hindu uh, uh, kingdom and now no longer a kingdom, but definitely a Hindu country. Um, uh, Sri Lanka has a Buddhist majority uh, uh, population. We have India, which is very diverse religious in religious terms, but sizable numbers of uh, uh, population of uh, religious minorities exist. There are caste, uh, they may not be numerically small in number, but they are minorities in other senses. The Dalits and Adivasis, very unique and different and diverse sections in the society. And also uh, uh, divided and uh, distinguished by religious 
differing religious identities ethnic identities and in uh, pakistan as well there are sizable minorities of christians hindus and muslims and so therefore even when we talk across the uh, south asian countries the diversities of who are minority women differ and uh, so if you're talking especially about religious minority women then yeah they have their own unique uh, differences in their own um, ways and we want to just uh, highlight a few of those differences if you look at india i'll speak a little more about indian context because i'm from india uh, not ignoring of course or uh, the other the, in bangladesh there are lots of Mus uh, muslim women as well very hard working and um, the, in fact the bangladeshi economy is upheld by the hard work that uh, women put in in their um, um beautiful and the, and the ga beautiful garments that come out of bangladesh the textiles and garments that come out of bangladesh but uh, so therefore it's largely women uh, driven by women power uh, but then there are also minorities there in um, in bangladesh who are linguistic minorities and religious minorities as well both christian and uh, muslim and i understand that there are uh, a section of dalits also who who live there uh, and who also form a linguistic minority uh, so these are the these are the ways in which uh, the the one thing about south south asia is that we are a very very diverse uh, uh, country and also about the when we talk about minorities india is in fact a country of minorities because it is popularly understood that india is a hindu country the hindu majority country but as a matter of fact if you look at uh, purely on the basis of religion there is supposed to be about 50, like 12 to 15% uh, muslim 12 to 12% muslim mi mi minorities there is christians are said to be around 2% or 3% at the most uh, across the country cutting across the population and the rest are lumped into the Chris hindu fold but as a matter of fact what is happening is that there have been many changes that and many ways in which people understand uh, their own identity and there are uh, calls for instance for uh, uh, tribals not to be counted as hindus because tribals constitute more than 10% uh, close to 10% of india's population many of them are christians some of them are muslim and there are people who adhere to uh, uh, indigenous religions Uh, and uh, in the northeast they belong to a different ethnic section and also have their own indigenous religions so th that is uh, already uh, 8 to 9% uh, who are clearly not hindu who don't identify as hindu and uh, then there are a large number of uh, scheduled castes that is the dalits uh, who are not who don't consider themselves hindu at all and uh, so uh, but then they have been counted as hindus they have been the, i have written and researched and written an article on the caste census debate the riddle of representation in india so it is available on the net if you study that you will find that they were counted as hindus because of the debate uh, that happened in 19, in the 1930s um, around whether uh, the so called what was no, what is now known as the depressed classes Uh, was i mean what is now known as the scheduled castes uh, were then known as the depressed classes but that included not only the untouchables but also the backward sections and backward communities form about uh, between 40 and uh, 60% depending on the area of the entire population of india and many of them uh, say that they don't necessarily identify as hindu so it is a, it is an issue uh we we so the it's partly mythical that uh india is a, a 80% hindu we have to be very clear about it and also our large numbers of the sc or the dalit population have converted either to islam or to uh, christianity in several states particularly in south india maybe not so much in north india but uh, for instance in the state for instance of say uh, andhra pradesh Uh, almost entirely the uh, scheduled castes have converted uh, mostly to christianity but also to islam and buddhism uh, but they are counted as scheduled castes and therefore they are counted as hindus because of their uh, certificate so there is this whole issue of uh, what is the identity so in such a context 
the issue of what is how women's issues are handled what are their concerns uh, and in in uh, among the minority and uh, uh, the caste minorities the deprived sections the marginalized sections uh, a large uh, one there are two important um, life experiences that women are forced into because of their caste in general one is manual scavenging a lot of women are into uh, cleaning you know uh, uh, public uh, sanitation work uh, in the cities municipalities and villages um and, and uh, almost 100% of them are dalits and uh, they have very very unique and uh, uh, severe problems which are not addressed by the mainstream uh, their uh, children even if they go even because they are required to come out to work at very early in the morning their uh, children are not there is nobody there to get the children ready and send them to school so their children's education gets badly affected and eventually what happens is when the children are 12 13 years old they end up in the doing the same work as their uh, mother does that is manual scavenging so intergenerational injustice uh, is uh, is perpetrated is uh, continued to happen uh, in the community the in the, in another uh, context uh, there is uh, uh, there is a still existing system called devdasi system in uh, parts of india Uh, where the women are dedicated women from dalit community are dedicated to a goddess um, or some nearby temple in that particular region and uh, uh, mostly dalit women and then after that not women children they are sometimes before they attain puberty also they are married off to the goddess this means that they cannot marry any man because they are not married to the goddess and so they will uh, be then uh, Uh, subjected to sexual slavery uh, by the males in the the privileged males in the region and uh, they can continue they continue to stay with their parents um, or they set up their own homes uh, but they cannot marry and so their uh, their duties are to their caste duty uh, is to be uh, sexual slaves to the powerful men eventually these girls end up in the brothels of uh, big cities like uh, bombay maybe pune and you know uh, mostly in the in Ma- maharashtra and uh, you know such places where brothels are, are available uh, because there are some cities where brothels do not exist in Cal- calcutta we have in uh, bombay we have uh, in delhi we have got this but not for instance i can't i don't know of any red light area for instance in a place like bangalore it happens but it happens very very um quietly uh, in residential homes or in slum areas but uh, there's no uh, known red light area in the city of bangalore for instance or any other cities like that so the red light areas is where they, these are the these these women who are uh, brought into sexual slavery uh, are from uh, usually the caste minority and the religious minority groups but not exclusively so many times these girls are trafficked uh, from tribal areas uh, tribal girls uh, you know uh, are very innocent and uh, uh, so they they very uh, they people easily uh, can uh, this sometimes even family members uh, male family members like cousins uh, uncles they also uh, end up trafficking their girl uh, children from the family so these kind of uh, atrocities are uh, perpetrated on sections of society who are not empowered therefore the marginalized minorities that is the dalits adivasis uh, to some extent the muslims uh, are very much uh, victimized by uh, the women are victimized by trafficking and as a result i think we need to uh, be very keenly aware that uh, empowerment is the important aspect the entire community especially the women and the men and the younger generation need to be focused upon for education for economic empowerment and for also citizenship training because people should know the power of their vote they should be able to negotiate um, from their community for their own benefits they need to be politically made aware of their rights and uh, so it is important for uh, education therefore to reach these sections 
and i would say that my uh, the education is the one very important first one education second economic empowerment so that people can choose uh, once they are able to read and write they can choose to migrate they can choose to take up work in another place which is far away from a, a town or village where they are being stigmatized on the basis of their uh, caste so it's very important that these are the ways in which uh, the so society empowers itself the community empowers itself and we also need as uh, socially uh, engaged actors as activists as journalists as teachers as government staff uh, each of us has a duty to ensure that uh, any no one should be left behind and so the, the the slogan is leave no one behind as you know this sdg's slogan is Le leave no one behind so no one should be left behind people need to progress and develop and attain the best potential and so we need to uh, work towards ensuring equality and uh, uh, progress uh, for the vulnerable sections especially women and children and young people in the marginalized and minority communities uh, and uh, this this applies universally to anywhere in the world but especially so to women in south asia whether they are from bangladesh nepal pakistan sri lanka or india or you know any other sak country so uh, with these i would like to thank sarim very much for inviting me and uh, um, end my discussion if there are any questions or uh, responses i'd be happy to take them thank you so much thank you so much for sharing the reality we appreciate you being here today to talk on this important issue many thanks now i will move to the next speaker dr lenin raghuvanshi founder and ceo of people vigilance committee on human right dalit right activist from india thank you for joining us today you are welcome to take the floor and proceed with your presentation please unmute yourself yeah, yeah already uh, i agreed the whole discussion and debate about sindhya ji and the but the most important thing <clears throat> because i am agreed with him her uh, 80% population of hindus and the whole debates because the diversity so but the most important thing if you look there is one 172.2 million muslims 27.8 million christians 20.8 million six and 4.5 Five million Jains, so it is a big population. And the most important thing to understand, uh, I have an entirely different discussion in India and in the whole South Asia. Uh, this uh, the mind of caste and the mind of patriarchy come together and create very different hegemonic masculinity. And uh, and um, and the mind of caste uh, derived from the uh, a book. Uh, which is called as holy book but for me it is an unholy book is manusmriti and the manusmriti described all women belongs to the sudras uh, so there is no rights for the education no rights to hold any property so in this way if you look the system came 2000 years before in this part of the world and that creates a lot of problems not only to the um uh, minorities women also for the um, upper caste people but there is a very different development in india especially after the godra rights and gujarat rights because there um people uh, in this rights uh, 2000 people are killed 10 more than 1 lakhs people 100000 people are displaced and many other injured and face a sexual violence and the killing at very targeted way also there is a many incident like in my state my province in uttar pradesh 2013 there is a muzaffarnagar rights where the uh, a lot of displacement internally and also the uh, uh, there is a nine um, gang rape and uh, <clears throat> also recently on the 24 August 2016 in the Mewat and Haryana two uh, muslim women were um, face the gang rape so uh, there is a lot of discrimination against the dalits and uh, all women and uh, and especially the minority but the highest uh, exploitations to the muslim minority 
so uh, that is that is the reality of the, our part of uh, our part of country um, and uh, and um, um, and and if you look um, uh, there is some scheme also um, um, introduced with the support of uh, world bank in our country like a nai manzil and there is a many successful story uh, but this in, this program is initiated like a nai manzil for the especially for the minority and muslim minority um, in 2012 and 2013 but what happened in 2014 there is a new birth with the new ideology uh, under the leadership of our prime minister and uh, they have the ideology um, of the uh, to create this country as a hindu rashtra and uh, and then what happened uh, here uh, they are creating a very different type of the fascism in this part in in our country and in and if you look um, they want to culture of silence and the culture of impunity and, um, and, um, and and the muslim minority is all main and the whole, as a whole community face a lot of mob lynching Uh, target attacks bulldozer politics <laughs> instant uh, giving the punishment to them with, without the without rule of law uh, that 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 already happening in 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 in, in our country and in this way uh, it is the biggest challenge to indian constitution so indian constitution talk about uh, protections of the uh, uh, minorities uh, but the another hand is the reality there is uh, very different politics of the corporate fascism which is the neo liberal policies as well as the um, uh, remnants of the caste system and the uh, and the patriarchy come together and create this different politics and for there i want to talk about entirely different propositions especially in, in our country if we <clears throat> we they want to break broke the people divide the people and in this way we need to unite and thanks to some political party they created and and different bharat jodo yatra and this bharat jodo yatra is a big hope and big challenge um, uh, to the sector in politics and um, uh, but the most important thing to understand because there's they use our um, they use our uh, differences and so we need to be create our friendly contradictions and we need to work on our differences so Uh, we talk about the first unity uh, amongst uh, sudul caste sudul tribe other backward caste and and also the progressive people born in the upper caste like me who believe in the reconciliation against caste system and patriarchy come together and the second already minorities are fighting but there is a lot of people who believe in secularism and who believe in communal harmony they need to come together and the third Um, fight we need to be against the neo liberal economic policy which is creating a lot of gaps between have and have nots and for that reason it is also important um uh, um uh, this uh, 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 um, uh, um we we need to unity of the all poor from the across the religion across the caste and in this way we, we called as the neo dalit movement Uh, because the dalit movement only belongs to sudul caste and, uh, and there is a big problems because the tribal people are talking about the adivasi movements and minor alsankhya movements and like that but we we need to be united new movements like a new dalit movement who is going to fight back against the caste system also against patriarchy also against the this uh, Uh, fascism and the communal understanding and communal politics and also against the neo liberal economic policies and uh, and this is very very important because the unity is so important and you look uh, this government brought us some laws uh, for the uh, muslim women just like a triple talaq uh, but you look um, talaq issue is the civil issues and we have and the all uh, uh, women movement brought the domestic violence act but they brought the triple talaq as a criminal law uh, because they want to punish uh, the muslim man <laughs> so and uh, and they uh, and they did not uh, and they did not support uh, and creating more conflicts um, between uh, inside the muslim community 
and also they are talking about the common uh, civil law um, and and you know that we are diverse we have different social practices we are not common in this sense only for the crime and for the uh, and also for the welfare we need to different affirmative actions because uh, we are very diverse and we are very different that we have we are our many community face the historical exclusion and for that reason it is also important to understand uh, the uh, this communal politics in india are doing very different politics because they want to um, brought the common um, uh, 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 civil law and common civil law is a, is a way uh, to not giving the respects to the uh, diversity not giving respect to the um 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 uh, 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 different uh, different opinion and different um practices and especially so most important thing um uh, i'm going to conclude because i have my flights so uh, most important things in uh, in the sanatan religion there is a basuda kutumbakam and there is a rights of there is a rights of the women uh, but the manusmriti the book came which which are against that in the same way in islam uh, we need to protect also the spirit of madina constitution where the the spirit of diversity so it is also important uh, because if any democracy any sus- sustainable development if the government and the state and the policies uh, and the development is not going to support the um, uh, minority women it means uh, there is a Insu- problem of the institutions and and this the problem of institutions is the totally the communal politics and it is the sector in politics so it is also important i understand uh, this is the same problem uh, also happening in the different part of the south asia uh, but the india what we achieve in 70 years we are facing uh, because there is a lot of attack on our institutions so uh, for that reason muslim women are facing not only in the gujarat uh, communal rights not only the katwa rape case not only in the mujaffar nagar communal rights also in the daily life so uh, that is the most important uh, because it is the right to choose um, they will use the uh, their own dress own uh, food habits so it is also there is also attack on that so in this way um uh, um uh, i am supporting uh, the whole spirit of madina constitution of this what the basul described as well as also here in india the manu um, basuda kutumbakam described by mahop nishad the whole world is the, our family and in, in this way uh, we need to give the respect to the women and the last people of the society thank you uh thank you so much dr raghunshi for your insightful view and knowledge wish you a safe travels um now that we have moved on i would like to invite the next speaker from nepal ms rita paryal she is a, an amazing writer human rights activist and humanitarian from nepal we value your presence today over to you please unmute yourself uh namaskar good afternoon everyone thank you so much for having me uh sorry with the sorry um the topic was about the protection about the minority women around in uh, south asia uh, well everybody has uh, spoken about their own issues i think the india has two candidate people today so they will explain what happened in india and then actually we had the same pretty much similar issues in nepal like nepal mostly uh it's a very small country but we have a very uh, different cultures and different caste uh, different uh, their languages uh, different their cultural so there are many minorities women exist here uh but but having said that there's a, like few community people is still like having the more issues than other side of the um, community uh, for example uh, uh, muslims are the uh community uh, you know minority community here uh, dalits are there and you know the indigenous people chepang and there's a many land uh, you know he, um, the people are who doesn't have a land and even the uh, citizenship of the nepal 
So what I like to say about the Nepal is like we have uh, like our um, the constitution and our religion, our social structure based on the caste system and patriarchy system. So everything uh, based on the caste system, your, con your constitution and your politics and your uh, social structure and your religion, I mean, your way of living life. So in matter of that, so everything, it's moved with the casteism issues. Even like if any woman, okay, of course the women are second citizen if uh, they call in Nepal too. But even the Dalit women and Muslim women are the more underprivileged and than any other women. So basically women rights and human rights. We have the more like two uh, a very powerful right we exercise in the world is that like in the human rights we are not exist Dalit women and then even the women rights we are not exist in the Dalit uh, women. So in between of too many rights, still the Dalit women do not have their way of access to um, exercise the, any uh, rights from the nation as a human, as a citizenship of the Nepal. Having said that, I don't say that like not everybody is exercising enough. So the in the past days, there's a lot of suffering where they are. So we all exercise now. So I'm able to, I mean, I belong to the Dalit community. Even I can speak to you in front of you. So I can raise my voice to our nation, our constitution, our political leaders. Um, then I write articles. So we are slowly working on that. But what I am trying to say is that we, I mean, I was an activist. I did protest about the, our rights on the street, you know, and I wrote the articles. Um, I speak about it like this on you know, issues like you and then everywhere. So what I think now, what is my uh, point is right now is that until unless the our government, every nation, I mean, in South Asia, who has a problem of this minority committee's women's problem if and until unless the government don't want to give a right to them the the ngos and this uh, social activists this they cannot just do everything so what i believe is that it's a big big talk is happening around the world and and we all activists like you like all around the world we speak about it but what is happening is at the end that the, the until unless the government the nation do not confess they have a problem and they don't they are not ready to have a solution for those people and we cannot do much about it and I, then again that doesn't mean that we don't have to speak we have to speak that's why these people are ready to do something else so in on context of nepal uh, as other two uh, uh, previous uh, speakers has said that how biggest problem in india about the casteism issues that people being killed you know people even cannot touch the tap temples and all this happening because because of the religion right so the inner religion that the, there's a certain people are higher caste and the certain people are lower caste and so and then then the our constitution and then our all the system is based on the caste system that's what the reason is that the the religion is play the vital role caste system is playing the vital role because of that so a lot of things working on that even the politically in our country we have like even the leaders our leaders are all the higher so-called higher caste so and they don't let the lower caste goes there and have their rights so now the all the people from nepal even the local level finally we are trying to pass the one law that Every ora means, you know, the municipality has um, like the small uh, or the local um, government. So we have able to pass the law that the, every ora has at least the Dalit women. They have to involve the one Dalit member as a, a group of the government, local government. So what happened was they play the trickily even here. So interesting point, what they did was the people who can speak, people who can read and write, 
they didn't take those people they only took take those people at just the name of the inclusion just the women that who cannot speak up and with the whatever decision you made there those women they don't even ask them okay we are doing meeting you you have to come you have to attend sometimes they invite them but they have no um, uh, knowledge acknowledgement of the issue so they cannot speak up for that so some of who can speak up they don't invite it so the way the government try to play the tricky roles okay listen look we have give you the right look we every every uh, local uh, state we have given one right to every dalit woman has to be there as a inclusion no but what they did was that they try to put those kind of women who cannot raise the voice so all the blame i give it to is government the government until unless they don't want to and nothing can change and in context of in nepal that's what the happen they give the rights but they give the rights that we have that right but we cannot exercise you know so like they, they like look like a elephant teeth it looks a bigger and stronger but you can there, there's no use of it so 86 point 86% of hindu lives in nepal so obviously our our law our constitution everything depends on the caste system and patriarchy is there and other things that in other i think the what's the name it's stephan the lady uh, she spoke about the changing the religion so why these people change the religion there's a reason that because every human wants to live the respectful life right so on the name of that they change the religion because they can feel uh, respected enough to live in a society that's the reason now the in nepal even that happening because so many people are changing into the muslim changing into the christianity so in when it comes to the uh, international law like for example i have been going through uh, caste issues okay i mean i had the casteism issues and i didn't get the law in nepal i mean i didn't get the i didn't get the uh, justice in nepal so what i can do is i can knock the un i can knock the international law um, um, organization but our country has blocked that way too in the sword like they, the many time the un has sent the letters to the nepal like okay inform us give it to the uh, data that passed this law that if anything happened to the nepal and the name of the casteism if if you cannot do the justice you can knock to the international door but that even this uh, government people in a who holds the power even they not updating that uh, law and then passing let the other people do that um, justice to other nation even that cannot happen so far it so um, if you uh, well everywhere like we 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 every day we talk about these issues i think i have been talking about the issues in nepal it's like how terrible is here is just it's unbelievable like everywhere that people has been tortured since the born once the children got the sins like okay children by born they don't know which caste they belong to once they born and they got a sins and they start playing around with the friends in society once they knows that they had a sins and since then they have been tortured by the oh you are low caste you cannot go there you cannot do this so whole life that the lead children has to justify that i am human i am like you you know to the so called uh, higher caste so which time they can enhance their um, i mean quality like okay some can be the doctors some can be uh, uh, engineer whatever they, you 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 name it but we cannot expand our horizon because we already have to uh, fight and we are really busy to prove that we are human we are look like you don't treat as a dog sort of so if in the, if if that torture every dalit child has to fish in a euro it takes years and years to heal that child so i always tell the people that like look this amount of the torture that the dalit child has faced in the society in our society so do not expect that they do the same amount of progress you do that is another social torture the other things is like even the 
we are not in any state levels of any state so obviously we don't have a job then our profession whatever we have the government never um help them to make an industrialize like uh, some dalit caste can switch the stitches you know make a clothes some mac can make a jewelry all these uh, their um, skills that never uh, enhanced by the government they never let them be the okay you do the industrialize so let's let's help these people to grow their financially growth they didn't do that so even financially they are already already lacking so the torture social stigma financially lack of financially and other things that once you are you are you are not touch of the education and then you don't have a money so obviously you are always back and then politically you are too far away in the politics there's a very few dalit uh, participant in uh, politi politics in nepal so all this uh, state of nepal and all this area of nepal that where dalit should be there and they are not there so obviously we are working on that so our all the future generation take a part of the bureaucracy part of the um, um, tu and then you know this um, business everywhere whatever they can do that we we trying to enforce for that with the law but still we we are very very not it there so but it's not that like we are not happy about it but i think the compared to the in india and uh, in nepal like um, we have uh, we have uh, some good news here that still the lead does not have to suffer so badly enough like india because i i i know that it's a, there's a there's a really bad situation is there but it's not that we don't have it here but economically financially once we are into the uh financially independent and then we can do much about it so i i have my own foundation and then uh, so what we we try to do is like the the girls mostly they don't go to schools uh, the parents don't want to send the schools in like you know after the 10th class like they were they thinking that ladki you know saadi karke she will go to the house so why should we invest on her so that's the concept still we have in nepali society and that the most of the medium class family and then the working class family so what i try to do is that i try to encourage to go to schools and try to help them to to after the uh, uh, slc i don't know what you call in pakistan you know so as a uh, school so the a class a level and then the two years of the um, in their life so i help them so and i you know i try to teach them as a life skill so on the basis of that life skill this they can continue for the stu uh, uh, studies in uh, in in their life so and then in in a woman as well i'm like trying to do as a like make them like whatever they can do is teach the uh, clothes and make some ornaments or make a pickle make biryani whatever they have they can do whatever they have is skills and if they don't have we try to uh, train them with the certain um skills so at least they don't have to depend on the husband and with the family so only uh, so they have a bit of money and they can fulfill their own um uh, needs so at least if you feel little of their needs and they can speak about themselves and their right so and other thing is i always um, i traveled um, you know the my country other country as well so what i think that we are uh, we we have to focus on that now that we have to uh, let them know what is their right you know so sometimes the people don't know their right so then if you don't know the your right then you you, you don't know what to ask so we have to make them realize that um we are, uh, what is your right in the nation in the world you know so in pakistan you teach your women that what is written in the constitution try to tell them let them know and then have awareness classes and then let them know that this is your rights if your husband beat you off if any uh, other society people try to uh, do something wrong you can report here you can get the justice if you if they know their rights i think even that way even we can empower the women you know so many times we are lacking cuz 
uh, whenever I talk to speak to the woman in a village that husband beaten up and they don't know what it is, what is it. I think they, they, the husband beat them out of love. If husband don't beat them, that is not love, you know. So it's kind of this mythical world they're living. So I think it's all lack of the awareness, lack of the knowledge. And the information they had, I think because of that too, even they cannot speak. So the major uh, thing is what I think in terms of uh, the South Asia content, um, um, we have to let their, them their rights. The awareness is a main thing. And obviously the financial independence is other things that we, we can do as a as an organization, as a civil society, um, as a humanitarian but again, then we have to hit the policy making. And that is the only way is that uh, get into the politics because every nation is the politician is the only one who makes law. So basically on that uh, way, so we have to hit certain um, point. It's the awareness. Information is the key to let them know, know they are right and financially independent. I mean, each way, I mean, whichever way we are doing, and after that, the education, and after that is hitting the policy making. So it's four factor. If we focus on that, and I know it's 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 a very very hard and tough way we are on the we are on it now. We all you and I. But what I believe is, if we all work together, and I'm sure we can make it happen one day. And I'm very optimistic about it. Um. So and then the. Uh, the way you guys working, we working, and different part of the people are working on that issues. And hope hope someday everybody lives dignified life in uh, in this world and your society, my society. Uh, that's what I wish for that. Thank you so much. I appreciate the remarks you made. What you said had a significant impact on many of us. Thank you so much. Last but not the least, I would like to invite Radha Veel. She's a CEO of Radha Organization and Dalit right activist from Pakistan. We are glad to have you today. Thank you for jo uh, joining Radha. Over to you. Assalamu alaikum. Namaste. Jai Bheem. Today, our topic or the topic we will talk about the next जो औरतें हैं उनका तहफुज तो जो हुकूक उनको मिले हुए हैं या जो नहीं मिले हुए हैं वो आप देख रहे हैं कि उनके उनका कितना तहफुज किया जा रहा है औरत के हवाले से जो है वो सरकारी लेवल पे उनके हुकूक हैं उनको उनके जो है वो कानून भी कुछ बने हुए हैं कुछ बन रहे हैं जहां औरत के हुकूक के कानून बन रहे हैं वहां अकलत जो औरत है या हमारी जो एक गरीब तबके से जो ताल्लुक रखती है औरत उसके उसके जो जो हक है उनका भी तहफुज करना जरूरी है हम अपनी सरकार से यह मुतालबा करना चाहते हैं कि जो हमारी अकलत की जो औरत है वो गैर महफूज है वो चाहे एग्रीकल्चर में काम करने वाली हो या घरों में काम करने वाली हो या हमारी जो माइनर बच्चियां हो उनके जो शादी है उनका सवाल हो उनको किडनैप करके उनको फोर्स कन्वर्जन या उनको फोर्स मैरिज किया जा रहा हो मतलब हर जगह पे जो हमारी शादीशुदा जो औरत है उसको जो है किडनैप करके उनको उठाया जाता है उनको जो है उनके निकाह के ऊपर निकाह किया जाता है हम सरकार को अपील करते हैं कि एक ऐसा कानून बनाए जिसमें निकाह के ऊपर तो निकाह ना होना वो तो हमारे लिए तहफुज होना या हमारी बच्ची जो हम अपने हम अपने जो अपने घर के जो अफराद हैं मिलकर खुशी से जो शादी करते हैं वो हाँ मानते हैं कि छोटी उम्र की शादी जो है वो एक कानूनी जुर्म है लेकिन वो जो जहाँ करते हैं वहाँ हमारी सरकार जो है वो पुलिस हर जगह पहुँच जाती है वो उनकी जो है शादी कहते हैं कि नहीं ये जो है बच्ची है ये चाइल्ड मेरेज हो रही है ये अल्डी चाइल्ड मेरेज हो रही है उसको जो है नाम कानूनी तौर पे फिर उनको जेल भेजा जाता है लेकिन जहाँ पर हमारी बच्चियों का किडनेपिंग का सवाल है वहाँ पर जो है उन बच्चियों को जब किडनेप किया जाता है वो बारह साल की तेरह साल की होती तो उनको जो है वो अदालत क्यों नहीं तहफुज देती उनको भी तहफुज देना था ये ना तो ये तो ना इंसाफ ये ना हम हिंदू औरतों के साथ या हम अकलीत के जो माइनॉरिटी के जो लोग हैं उन औरतों के साथ तो ये तो ना इंसाफ ये थैंक यू सो मच आई अप्रिशिएट योर रिमार्क्स सो नाउ द एसोसिएट प्रोजेक्ट डायरेक्टर ऑफ सारे मिस सुम्बल यूसुफ इज नाउ वेलकम टू शेयर हर क्लोजिंग रिमार्क्स विद आस 
Over to you, Sumbul. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I would like to first uh, pay my gratitude and deep uh, thankfulness to all the speakers, uh, Ms. Cynthia Stephen, uh, Dr. Lenin Raghwanshi, and uh, Ms. Rita Pariyar. And since uh, Ms. Cynthia and Dr. Lenin had uh, both had emergency um, commitments, they had to leave. So <laughs> we have Ms. Rita with us right now. So thank you for being with us. And um, I would say that this was a very useful panel and we had a very um, a deep discussion about women's rights, which was not focused on one uh, aspect alone, but uh, uh, catered in uh, many different aspects that the minority women face. And um, as Ms. Cynthia Stephen highlighted, that women's right is not just only about the rights of women who are in limelight, who are already visible in the society, but also about the women who belong to the very invisibilized <coughs> uh, sections of the society who are already marginalized and they face uh, intersectional uh, discrimination that is a, a double kind of discrimination. Mm -hmm. So uh, she rightfully highlighted um, uh, the issues facing uh, the practical issues that she herself observes in her part of uh, the country. That is that women are uh, a lot of minority women specifically are in public sanitation work uh, are workers and they're not able to uh, you know get their rights and they're not able to focus on the education of their children, which results in an intergenerational in, uh, uh, injustice. Another important uh, issue that she highlighted was of the Dasis, the girls from the Dalit communities who are um, committed to the temple and thus they become um, the, the victims of uh, sexual abuse and sexual slavery all uh, their life. And they cannot come out of it. Uh, so they end up in brothels when they grow up. So as solution, she highlighted that we need to focus on three aspects. The first is education, the second is economic empowerment, and the third is creating political awareness for increased participation. Dr. Lenin Rao um gave us a very broad picture of how minorities are being marginalized in today's world because of uh, certain extremist ideas which are now in power. Uh, he highlighted uh, not only religiously new stigma about women that you know all women uh, have certain kind of low status and they don't need to get education they don't have the right to participate in the social realm uh, he also highlighted that how sexual violence has become a very common weapon against the minorities uh, communities or, or, or of his country especially the muslim women after the godra and gujarat riots uh, what he said is uh, rightfully is that this is a con challenge to the constitution and um, he pointed out the role of corporate fascism and the neoliberal hegemony that is playing its role in um, exploiting uh, the classes and not only exploiting the oppressed classes but also trying to divide them so that the oppressed and marginalized communities from different sections of societies are pitted against each other and they're not united in their fight against the oppressors. So this was a very important uh, point indeed. Um, as, as Ms. Rita Pariyar highlighted, the issues faced by minority people in Nepal, and especially the women and girls uh, from uh, uh, the lower caste communities, uh, she highlighted how, how uh, the role of government is just so important and uh, how the government is also not only uh, taking makeup and uh, fake, uh, you know, uh, measures just to show that we are providing participation to the women, we are providing, you know, uh, 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 access and opportunity to, to the women, which is not helpful. They're also resisting and creating barriers for the international organizations, which are trying to help the lower caste and uh, the minorities. Um, uh, she uh, she highlighted that her organization of certain social stigma and certain concepts. Um, uh, so she not only tries to provide education to the girls after a certain age, but also very importantly, she also helps them to achieve economic in independence 
by learning skills, which is a very important part of empowerment. So until the girls and women all over South Asia, uh, not only Nepal, India, or Pakistan, but all over, um, we need to um, work on the education of the girls so that they are economically empowered as well and they know their rights. They are also aware about their rights and they're able to recognize the abuse that they're facing. And they know that standing up to that abuse is not something that doing against their character. It's not something that would uh, make them a, a bad girl, a bad woman. So th this kind of awareness is very important. So I would very much agree with Ms. Rita on that. Um, that was a very helpful discussion for all of the girls and women for us. And for all of us who are trying to help the girls from marginalized communities to, uh, to know about their rights and to struggle for their rights. Uh, thank you all. Um, thank you for joining. Let's meet in the next webinar. Thank you so much, Sambul, for concluding so beautifully. As this webinar comes to an end, I would like to take a minute to thank our outstanding speakers for sharing their insightful perspective on the International Women's Day. Additionally, I would like to express our gratitude to the crew who work hard behind the scenes to make this webinar a success. We want to con uh, congratulate you all once more for participating in this webinar. We hope you will do it in the soon also. Goodbye, stay safe, wish you all a very happy International Women's Day. Thank you for joining.